It took six years to make a racer head, and all I can remember about that classic little bit of art house is that messed up baby. Jesus, tap dancing crass on a cracker. Now you may be wondering what the hell I'm going on about, but well, if you like me, you're three beers into this night and don't quite know how to start this video. Because you see, the game I'm about to talk about took six years to make, and they don't have nearly anything as cool as that baby in it. So what we got right here is a game called Gone Waters. It was more or less made by one man over the course of six years. Now the game itself really isn't about anything calm or watery, but rather this. My name is Peter Taylor. Around two years ago, I lost my wife. My whole world collapsed. She was the purpose of me living. She was my life. She was my everything. And I miss her. A single Goddamn tear falls from my pixelated face. For a man that done lost his wife at the beginning of a unity powered adventure creator made point and click game. But first folks, let's get our headphones on because despite the fact that this game is currently only on PC, and it's acting like a goddamn iOS port. After all, Dolby surround sound is for the petty bourgeoisie. So anyway, after that bit of build up. As soon as I'd arrived at the hotel, the first thing I decided to do was go inside and check in. So we made it to some Greek island, and I'm assuming this is supposed to be more or less the present day. So I guess let's go ahead and do what the game says, and check in. Hi, I'm Peter, Peter Taylor. I booked a room here three weeks ago. Yes, Mr. Taylor. We've been awaiting your arrival. I trust your flight was okay. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, or however you prefer to identify, is one off. Authentic Greek accent, if I've ever heard one. And yeah, that's one thing you are gonna notice throughout this game, folks. It's a bit on the low budget side. There's only maybe half a dozen voice actors, and they all sound like British people. So, quite frankly, I do think it would have benefited the game to have been set on, well, some British island. Cause come on, folks, is anyone gonna buy that this lady's Greek? I do hope that you enjoy your stay with us here on the island of Linos. I'm sure I will. I'll be sure to be in touch if I have any questions. Well, that's some true to life puzzling if I've ever seen it. Now, we've already given up our passport, which, of course, is the only logical thing to do when you're traveling in a foreign country. At least now we get to check out our digs that we're going to be spending the week in. And I gotta say, we got some nice hardwood floors in here. So we find some cane that someone left behind. I don't know about you guys, but that seems kind of weird. After all, how did the guy get out of here without his cane? But anyway, there's also a safe inside of here, so clearly we're going to have to find a combination for it, because there's probably something mighty important locked away inside of it. Because, you know, this is an adventure game, so obviously, any locked door or locked safe we need to get into to advance the story. And speaking of stories, look what we find in our room's nightstand. It looked like a journal left here by the previous guest. Day one. I'm not going to bother writing down my name or telling you who I am, because I only serve to be an exposition dump. I've arrived in the British Greek island, and I'm staying in this hotel room, and I've decided to write a journal, although I've never written a journal at any other point in my life, but oh well. I got a group onto this place, and turns out there's some monster here that kills tourists. Yeah, I'm going to write this down instead of trying to contact the authorities or just get the hell out of this place, because, you know, I'm a character in a horror game, and I'm not really going to think this true. Oh my god, I died while writing. Damn. Well, hopefully whatever kill me will just put this book in the nightstand and I don't know what they're going to do with my body. Probably eat it or something. But whew, thank God they preserved this journal for the next person that spends the night here in this room where I left my cane behind. And oh yeah, I also wrote down the safe combination on this journal because, you know, efficiency. Oh well, I'm done. Have a nice day. Strange. Well, not so much strange as rather standard for your horror adventure games. Now, this guy has not even begun to unpack his non-existent bags. I mean, do you see any bags anywhere in this room? But yeah, we've already found out that our holiday is going to be interrupted, most likely by some sort of tourist murdering monster, and the natives are somehow complacent in it. Fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, I unlocked that safe because, yeah, the journal did have the combination for it. And we got a card. Wonderbar. Well, I gotta give Calm Waters credit, folks. It knows how to give you a plot whiplash. So, because of that, let's recap really quickly. 
We're a dude. We lost our wife. It was devastating. We took a vacation to some Greek island. Turns out the Greek island has a dark, sinister mystery that, of course, at least for the early part of the game, our hero doesn't believe is real because he just finds apocalyptic logs laying around everywhere. So naturally, we're going to be skeptical about this entire dark mystery stuff, even though the game is shoving it down our throats, even before we can begin to get a grip on this world. I mean, hell, I'm just now able to walk outside and I'm already convinced that this island has some Cthulhu menace on it. But hey, let's go talk to some crying lady because surely this isn't ominous at all. Are you okay? If, if I'm being honest, no. Oh God, this hurts so bad. Would you like me to call somebody for you? The only person you could have called for me is gone. Gone? Oh, come on, dude. It's so obvious. Clearly she lost a loved one to whatever madness is plaguing this island. I mean, really, she has. And the game, again, is being super subtle about this whole dark and mysterious island. Jesus, if it was any more obvious, it would be like Manson with a swastika on his forehead. What makes you think that the island out there has something to do with the disappearances? When Max and I came to Linos last year, we stayed here for one week. In that time, two people vanished. Tourists. Two people? That is rather strange. Yeah, tourists go missing all the time, especially white tourists. and wouldn't, like, make the news or anything. And also, in combination with that apocalyptic log, I really feel like saying that Denial is not just a river in Egypt, but this man's perpetual state of being, because I've never seen a man deny so many obvious things before. Well, unless they're a politician. The point stands. All I've got to remind me of Max is this necklace that he gave me. I'm terribly sorry, Jody. Now, I do think it's pretty interesting that this game actually uses pictures of humans. I guess it's one way to work around the awkward 3D model problem that a lot of lower budget games have. But yeah, after listening to the latest sob story, our hero is like, hmm, well, I'm going to hit the hay and just vacation now. I ain't going to pay no mind to any of these stories I'm hearing. I woke up the following day feeling slightly at unease. Well, probably because you slept in the bathroom. How much did you drink, man? Well, the cops are waiting for us, so maybe we did have one too many. My name is Detective Mancini. Last night, a woman, a tourist called Jody, suddenly vanished off the island. Oh no, not Jody, a character we briefly met. Who's now disappeared and we'll never find out what happened to her. She probably got eaten by the monster. But oh yeah, we're being blamed for it because, you know, we do act really fucking suspicious. Just give us some time, folks. I'm not entirely convinced that this man did not kill Jody, but we'll get to my pet theory later. The island of Linos is a small island. Everybody knows everybody's business. Well, it also doesn't help that cops talk to people really fucking loud with just a hotel clerk there awkwardly overhearing this and being like, um... Yeah, officer, I don't know if I should keep renting to this guy. Um, he may try to steal more than some towels. Don't be going far, Taylor. I may want to speak to you again. Man, this is the vacation from hell already. And I'm not just mentioning that because, well, the man's accusing us of a crime that we likely didn't commit, but rather that there ain't a whole lot to do here. There is only one store on this entire island, and all they sell is just like random bric-a-brac that nobody really wants. But we do pick up some essential items here, so yay to that. But really, it does not seem like this is a thriving tourist destination, especially when you consider how the restaurant operates. Hell, just listen to how the game rationalizes it. Hey, mate. Um, hi. Welcome to Fraggy's. That's what I call it, anyhow. <laughs> Fraggy's is a membership-only venue, I'm afraid. Do you have a membership card, sir? Yeah, for reasons of adventure game logic and to pad out the game, turns out the car that we found in the safe in the hotel room was the car to this eatery. The only eatery in the whole entire island. And it's also membership-only because, you know, that makes sense, I guess. I don't know, maybe they're trying to work around the liquor laws or something. Perhaps it's just really easy to become a member, and we didn't bother to ask how to become a member, so instead we had to crack a safe so we can come in here. And, well, we don't need anything. We just end up talking to this lady, who it turns out is, well, another primary character in this game. Yeah, this is how we meet, um, our other protagonist. Just hanging out in a diner for no goddamn good reason. It's a lovely day, isn't it? Hi, I'm Peter. Oh, it sure is. Hi, Pete. I'm Michelle. So allow me to fast forward through the introductions. Turns out Michelle is a journalist who's doing a story about all the death happening on this island. But still, our hero isn't buying it because, 
Skepticism is required for Act 1 of any horror movie. Wow. That's a pretty messed up story, Pete. You're telling me. I just wanted to have a peaceful holiday, and within 12 hours I'm the prime suspect in a missing persons case. Listen, I'm just going to put this out there, Pete. Go on. Would you like to help me get to the bottom of this? I mean, it's pretty fucking clear, pardon my French, that something's going on over there, right? Look, Michelle, right? Michelle, I don't want to be getting involved in this right now. I've got a lot on my mind. I came here to relax, not solve mysteries. You're the journalist, Michelle. You investigate. And I don't mean to sound off with you. I just want to rest. And yeah, our hero just kind of leaves it at that. Yeah, all this obvious murdering's going on. I'm a prime suspect in a missing persons case. But fuck it. I'm just here to relax. I ain't gonna do shit. Well, at least until I stumble upon something that's kind of mysterious and sinister. I used the cane to reach it. I got it. Oh my god. It was Jody's necklace. Well, who knew relaxing men tamper with a crime scene and pick up the one item that a missing person said they would never part with? Yeah, we don't look suspicious at all. So I guess now that we found this necklace, our hero's finally convinced there's something sinister afoot. And now he's going to talk to that reporter lady and say he's going to buy into this whole murder mystery island thing. <sighs> How the hell have I got myself into this situation? We'll sort this, Petey boy. Petey boy? It seemed the right thing to say at the time. Sorry. Okay, I'll meet you tonight. Thanks, Michelle. You can thank me when this is all over. Also, take this. It's my card. My number's on the back should you need to contact me in the meantime. Great, thanks. For now, just keep your head down and your hands clean. And if I were you, I'd go and put Jody's necklace somewhere safe. Seriously, stealing crime scene evidence. Tut, tut. Okay, okay, stop it. I get it. I messed up. Now y'all may never play this game, and frankly I don't blame you if you don't. But what's weird about this game is they're trying to make it seem like Peter Boy here taking that necklace was just a big old screw up. A big old misunderstanding. Don't know why he did it. Actually, that is true. I have no idea why he did it. That's why I kind of think that maybe he did have something to do with Jody's disappearance. Because why the hell would he go to the crime scene and tamper with it and steal the necklace unless he already knew it was there? Hmm. I mean, I'm just saying. It's entirely possible that you could view this game as Peter, mad with grief, has gone to this island and is killing tourists because, well, you know, fill out your favorite horror trope. But yeah, apparently our whole quest is pretty intriguing because the waiter yells after us because, yeah, it sounds like we're going to have a grand old time now, and he wants in. Well, surely you're going to have to go and explore the island over there, right? You know, clear name and that. I want to go with you. Clear my name? <sighs> I don't need to clear my name. I don't need this right now. You must have misheard what we were talking about. I didn't mishear the fittest so that the necklace you've got from the latest missing lady is police evidence. I mean, the man ain't wrong. We do look mad as suspicious. But yeah, basically he just wants to blackmail us into going to the island, cause it sounds like it's gonna be fun. And our character is really the only Debbie Downer about it. I mean, the journalist wants to go, this waiter wants to go, well, we don't want to go because, oh, I really don't want to clear my name, I'm just here to have a vacation. Er, why does everything have to be so dramatic? God, it's like I'm in the middle of an adventure game, now I'm gonna be a curmudgeon about it. And I'm not looking for fun. This stuff is serious, Glenn. Oh well, with that said, let's go ahead and try to hide some evidence. Now, if it was me, I would dump the necklace into the sea. But no, the game won't let us do that. Instead, the game wants us to hide it like a trophy in the safe. Because again, we totally did not kill that woman. Well, well, well. Listen, detective. This is not what it looks like. I found this on the beach. I didn't know it was evidence from a crime scene. Jesus, tap dancing crashed on a cracker. This cracker has no sense about him. He gave up the goose to the officer right then and there. He can't lie his way out of a wet paper bag. It's like, oh, officer, this necklace. Oh, totally didn't know it was important. Didn't get it from a crime scene or anything. <laughs> no, I don't look suspicious. Jesus, this man deserves to go to prison because I'm pretty sure he killed that lady. And that's exactly what happens. Petey boy goes to jail. Wonderful for him. How will he get out? Is he actually a killer? Does this game really not have that really great of a plot for being in development for six years or really a whole lot of locations? Although I really don't want to punch down and insult the dev because it was one dude. Yeah, come on, man. He's trying. It's a passion project, so I don't want to belittle it. I just want to say, well, 
There ain't a whole lot of substance to it. So let's leave it at that, and leave it at the end of this episode, because, I don't know, I feel like making a multi-parter. So sue me. I mean, you can't, I don't really have a whole lot of assets, so you wouldn't get much. But yeah, have a nice day, folks.